Growing skills, the biggest one is called, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, what they're doing with education in Cornwall. So, uh, whoa, that's big. <laughs> so that's me. Uh, I'm Mike Wilcock. I work at Cornwall College, where for the last nine years I've been the MIS manager of information systems, led the software development team. And um, prior to that, I used to be in the army, and that's where I've been starting my software development career, was uh, in the army doing systems that were used on operations. Um, but more recently, I've become much more involved in the education side and being based in the college, uh, work kind of close to the academic side and um, bringing my industry experience and what it's like to do software development and being a software development team. And uh, there's quite a bit of crossover between the departments. And more recently, I've become more and more involved in. Um, did anybody go to the last talk about education um, from the University of London, UCL? Um, but then there's a mention about experiences, creating experiences, and uh, trying to give people a feel, young children, young people, a feel for what it's like to be a software developer, trying to encourage them into the sector and grow the skills we've got in course. Uh, so I've become quite involved in that, and through that, it's led to that sort of growing and turning into something much bigger as we try and address the skill shortage in Cornwall, which is what I'm going to talk about this morning. So that's me. Um, head Geek at my digital, we'll touch on that in a moment. There's something not quite right with colours, I don't think it's that blue on there. <laughs> well, my Raspberry Pi has become purple. <laughs> okay, so digital skills. This first bit of audience participation. I've got a couple of bits of audience participation built in. Uh, you can get your devices out and you can go to kahoot.it. And it'll ask you for a pin, you get a screen like that one, and put your game pin in. This is your game pin here. A little bit of a competition to see how much you know about skills, this current kind of skills environment. Um, and a little bit of fun, you get scored as you go through it, and there's big prizes to win. I've got some very rare Raspberry Pi stickers. <laughs> there's, only, there's only about a couple of hundred of these made for a special event. Um, so the winners will get some Raspberry Pi stickers. One. Naughty nicknames beware. <laughs> Who puts them in? Somebody who's employed in the digital sector, the tech sector, 
contributes £91,000 to the digital economy <coughs> in the UK. The massive difference involved in tech. What else do we have? 153, that'd be good. Um, but yeah, more than 78. Uh, this has come from, should be down at the bottom here, some research that was done by the Tech Partnership. You ready? Oh, there's the scoreboard. Jim, you're in the lead for a sticker. <laughs> the UK economy is losing how much due to unfilled roles in the industry <coughs> skills? Not this is short as well. And 
students who want to do that. It's going to be part of the skill set they need uh, in the future. But now, previously, it's quite dull and boring behavior. I think they've changed the curriculum. They make it more about computer science rather than mm -hmm. what it used to be. So I think like computer science, but I didn't do it. I just did maths. Yeah. That was my way into it. Right? And addressing make it being boring, so we talk about actually. Okay. Um, but you're right, and the perception around it. Uh, I've got, I was, well, I've got the next question, so I wanted to say, what were the questions? I've got what they are. Dan B. <coughs> you're warming ahead. Get that wrong button. <laughs> okay, how many students studied the Gorilla in 2014? That includes what goes on here, Bamberth with games, uh, goes on Cornwall College, Truro College, doesn't include Plymouth, so this is just within Cornwall. There are only 80 students. Now, if you think about the skills pipeline going through, then we've got quite low suddenly to those that are going to go out into industry and have got a degree. Now, whether they need a degree to go into industry is another question, but I still like to see more in Cornwall um, achieving a degree in or at least studying a degree. Quite a few of those are really but they probably stay around there rather than come back to the school. So I know quite a few people yeah. call them that have degrees at Reading, but they don't come back up and they just stay around there. And that losing the skills, the skills yeah. drain. Yeah. People go out and more than all to make sure there's the opportunity to hear that. Going to the university is a big step, and for many people it is a chance to get away from home, go somewhere else, meet new friends, and there's a whole other aspect of it. Um, but making sure there are a really good for doing a degree in accounting and it's an exciting thing to do and you don't have to go away as what you want to achieve and get that number up a little bit higher than that. Right, what's the scoreboard look like? Math! Is that winner? <laughs> Math! Cool. This is the rare Raspberry Pi sticker. My other computer costs $35. There's only about 200 of these made. I'm actually get older about 50 of them. There you go, well done. Well done, Math. Good luck. Okay, so the idea of that was really just to illustrate um, what the pipeline looks like at the moment, and it's quite narrow. We need to expand that pipeline, and we need to make computing interesting and make it an accessible subject that more people want to come and take part in. Because whenever you talk to kids, or, um, then most of them actually want to be involved in digital in some way. Um, just need to give them those opportunities to go back through. So I'm going to take you through the different things that are happening at the moment and what's changed in the last year. So last year I came in with a presentation and tried to get people involved. Um, so we started at primary school. This is St. Ewan's School and they received um, this is their code club. Uh, they got a status of a star club for the work that goes on there. Um, and getting code clubs set up in primary school is a really key thing that I want to see happening for. I want every primary school child to have access to a code club, a weekly club where they go for an hour and get to take what they've learned in lessons and what they're learning outside of lessons and be there with somebody who knows a little bit about computing and help them out and help them explore and expand and use their imagination. Um, we need to get more of those. Last year we had about 20 running and it'd be great if we can get more running this year. And as we go through September and October, that's when the clubs tend to spring up. But getting the message out there, these are great things to run, they're a great way of getting out of work and um, getting away from that normal working pattern of going out with a bit of common kids. And it builds your own knowledge, your own confidence. It's um, really great thing to be involved in. But also at primary school, the computing curriculum changed three years ago now. And primary school teachers are not don't have coding skills, they don't have digital skills, but all this curriculum is dumped on them. So we're trying to help them understand what it means, how actually all this alien terminology is concepts they're familiar with, we've just given it a horrible label like computational thinking um, or abstraction. Um, and they're doing this stuff all the time, it's giving them the confidence to know they are, and then building on it and making it, making the kids aware and more familiar with it. So we've got programs going on through a collaboration with BT called Barefoot. Have you heard of Barefoot Computing? It's a really great set of resources, and we just need volunteers to get out there 
and go and deliver this. So if you're interested in helping out, Googling barefoot um, computing will bring it up and just volunteer. You go and give an hour session to a group of primary school teachers and they're all quite nervous, they're more nervous than you. Um, and Beth will give you enough training that you can go and deliver a presentation, share some of the resources I start to build their confidence in delivering um, the computing curriculum. So that's the primary, and unless we do the teacher bit, then it doesn't start at primary school, but if we start at year at age six, teaching kids digital skills, and we don't call them digital skills, we don't use the terminology there, but we just start to point them in that direction. It's about solving problems, really. That's all it's about. Um, but if we give them the right skills to solve problems in the right way, then the things we'll do later on in the pipeline will really um, be amazing. So we come to secondary schools, and Rain's not here. The Rain um, is uh, at the conference uh, today, and she's a computing at schools master teacher, and she thinks the great things are problem, and there's great things happening in secondary schools, um, but it's patchy, as it is with most things. Um, these girls they won a competition with on robotics and won some robots for Bobbin College and um, Bobbin also won a competition with Microsoft. There's some great stuff going on at Bobbin, um, but there's some great stuff going on others, but not enough. So trying to support secondary schools. If you've got kids at secondary school, if you've got a secondary school near where you're based, try and make contact with them. They're always looking for external help. And just somebody can give them a steer, give them some guidance on running projects. Um, the, Children really appreciate having a different face who can come in and help them with stuff. And if you're from industry, it adds so much more value to what they're learning. Trying to make the curriculum exciting and keep them engaged and interested is the challenge of secondary school. And the drop off of girls, what's really interesting at Bobbin is Lorraine has managed to get a great cohort of girls and managed to turn it around so that girls get involved in computing at Bobbin. But those Penn Rice over in South School, they've got no girls doing computing. And Trying to shape and change it, the computing teacher is female, and, um, but the girls are trying to track to it. At this age, when we lose females, and females are really important as part of making up a digital team. Um, so that's secondary school, and then we come on to further education. And uh, here's the Cornwall College Group, there are other colleges, <laughs> this is level two. Um, but in Cornwall, there are two colleges there's Cornwall College Group and there's Troy and Pembroke College. Um, but there are also six forms delivering uh, A-levels and vocational subjects. We see a real drop-off in people taking level, what we call level three, 16 to 18 computing. Um, we've looked at A-levels there, I've got the number now, 61, I think. <coughs> um, there's a number of vocational subjects, but actually software development. It's really hard to recruit learners in software development courses. IT practitioner courses, bolt, bolting and putting machines together, setting up networks. They seem really popular. Um, but trying to get people to recognise software development or realise software development is the course they want to get on, involved in is quite tricky. Um, there's also a perception issue which we touched on in the, the session before lunch around uh, if I want to get a career in, and I'm clever, then I need to do A levels, I need to go to university. Uh, but actually, it's not necessarily the case. I'm following a vocational route, going to college, getting Real experience, hands on experience of what it's like to be working and getting those skills you need is as valuable, possibly arguably more valuable, than going off and getting a computing science degree. But the perception of going to college isn't great, and learners don't necessarily want to go to college. They'd rather go and um, go and follow perhaps an A level route. I'm sure there's someone else in the college. Um, We've been doing some interesting work at Cornwall College with, with Software Cornwall and trying to explore different ways of engaging with young children, young people, to show them what a career in software development is like and try and inspire them and make them realise that it's a fun and exciting place to be. Um, and we've run experience weeks, we've run a mission to Mars, which some of you may have heard of, and we have taken them for a week and Get them into code by Mission to Mars robot. This is a Mark one. And we software Cornwall recently ran a crowdfunding campaign. If any of you contributed, thank you very much. Um, this is our Mark II, slightly bigger, slightly more meaty than the Mark one. In fact, quite a bit heavier than the Mark one as well. And I get has had some additional flashing lights put on. This robot's kindly donated by a packet ship, all sat just there, thank you, Paul. Um, 
And what we do in the week is we get them working in teams. We get them solving quite difficult problems. Even just getting all of these robots to go in sort of straight lines is not easy. Uh, but you see that how they, the goals, they realise it's achievable and they keep going, they keep going. And there are all sorts of skills in doing that. Not to mention the team working skills. And we're trying to get that inspiration there. We're running, we aim to run two of these a year, one east and one west in Cornwall. Um, we're always looking for volunteers, so the way it works is we have mentors and try and get a mentor for a team if we can. Mentors from industry who come in and if you come and do it, it's a great opportunity to just have a bit of fun for a week and employ them and support you and let you go and do it. Not you have to do it through, through the but coming along and being part of that. Or if you're interested in your know, foreign form and setting something up in your own area, I'm happy to talk to you about what we've done and um, how we've made it work. <coughs> but that, that has really great results and it's a great way to see the talent coming through and also inspire others. Also at colleges we do offer degree levels and what we're seeing at degree level is again a bit like level three, a real struggle to recruit into software development. Um, both ourselves and Truro College have struggled this year to get enough to get a viable cohort to run a software development degree. Um, we think that we're this next couple of weeks, then deciding weeks about how we've got enough numbers based on A level results or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident we will run a Software development, uh, software development degree, but it's it's always close and it shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't have loads of numbers. We've got loads of jobs to fill out there. Industry are asking for people, but again, it comes back to perception and um, is this right for me? So we've got to look at a whole range of ways that we can better engage people and encourage them to come on the courses and make them realise actually there's a job here that's for me. It's a fun course to go on. Which sort of brings me and the way I think about uh, what is further education. Do many of you even recognise further education as a term? What would you, what, what's the purpose of colleges? Say, what are we here for? Skills that you need. Skills, the social yeah. aspect of it. There's, there's a lot to it. It depends on the institution they go to. So you, know, you can go to a certain institution and really get nothing out of it. But you can go to a different one and get everything that you need and more. Yeah. Um, so yeah. There's, 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 there's a lot to it. I think there is variability. Yeah, absolutely. But the way I see it, the purpose of further education, Bethy, is <coughs> it's how the government put money into, um, into an area to grow the skills the economy need in that area and create the skills that are needed for the businesses to thrive and, uh, and grow. So, as an employee, well, in my challenge is to work out how do I do that, how do I attract people in and make it an interesting and viable proposition and use the government money to the best effect to give you the skills that you need, in, the workforce that you need, and get those skills. How many applicants have you had outside of the council? Very few. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but um, for, the, for the computing, we don't get any answers. That's all we need. There are other courses. I mean, we've got, you see, the Centre for Wildlife Education, in fact, recently, they do have a big course. The council has a big problem of yeah. the council. Yes. Um, but for computing, everybody does computing. One computer course looks like another. Um, and unless it's differentiated. Which is a good point. By the sea. By the sea, yeah. But differentiator. Not very well. So we pull these ideas and thoughts together um, and thought, how do we address it? What can we do to make it different? How do we uh, attract people into uh, a course that relates to digital skills and um, also deliver the skills that you need in industry. Uh, what we, so some of the events we run, uh, the one event we ran at the Eden Project, where we had our degree students for a whole week working on a problem at the Eden Project, creating sensors, presenting data back to uh, visitors, and it really highlighted that. Despite the fact we're doing foundation degrees and that's supposed to be work based and work relevant, but the students still didn't have a fundamental grasp of some of the concepts that they needed to. Um, and based on that, we did quite a bit of thinking and came up with the idea we need to redo this. We need to think about how we, um, how we deliver skills and knowledge and what we want people to come out the other side with. And when they present themselves to you in a job interview, what does it look like? What, uh, what is that person? Um, able to demonstrate. So, another bit of audience participation. Uh, we're going back to the YouTube. 
<coughs> so, if you go back to the hoop and put in this pin,
Set the hard stick at the beginning. So what we want to achieve with Iron Digital is a, an academy where students come for five days a week, Monday to Friday, nine to five, it's like your job. Skills are learned really by doing, and so they're working on projects all the time. We try and apply scrum to the way they learn, so we start at the beginning of the week with um, our sprint planning, work out what we're going to learn that week, we're going to look at the project and then how we're going to tackle the, the problem that the project presents. And we try our projects that are real problems, as real as possible. Having authentic projects, so people can really buy into it and give it a go. Um, and want to build it on open source software, open data, because lots of young people don't appreciate what open source is. They don't even know it's safe. They've got this mixed up with shareware and freeware and all these other terms. And don't realize that this is a fundamental part of what makes up the ecosystem of um, software development. So those are the ways we intend to run the, uh, the academy. What I want at the end of this is when a student comes to you for a job interview, this is what they're able to do. This is how you recognize them. They have a portfolio of projects, probably in GitHub, um, on a blog, and um, maybe they'll have a profile, or they will have a profile in Stack Overflow, and you'll be able to see the work they've been involved in. They'll understand what it is to be in the business, they're agile by default, um, and then this one here, something we touched on in the last talk from UCL, they'll find an open source project they enjoy, or that's relevant to them, and get involved with it. And that's the way we're going to try and um, help them learn. They cover a range of topics, and I'm running out of time, and I'll whiz through and just give you a feel for what they actually cover. This is based on the qualification. Um, that they study. They study something called technical baccalaureate, which has disappeared off the top of my screen. But a technical baccalaureate is a number of different units made up here, along with A-level maths, or an equivalent to A-level maths. Maths, quite an important part of computing. And um, so that's a requirement for them throughout this course. The things they'll cover there, we've got project management, security, networking, <coughs> um, digital business communications, software development, uh, analysis of data, some enterprise technologies, uh, and then that's the first year, and then the second year goes on, we do a bit of games, a bit of object orientated coding, mobile development, um, and some workplace skills. But as, um, the thing I found difficult as I started to look at this is trying to make sure the way we deliver is through projects engaging projects they can get involved in and not go down the route of we're going to do a unit now in networking. Here's how you do networking and go through that. And the challenge is trying to come up with those projects and map those projects to the curriculum. So coming at the end of their time with us, the end of their two years, they've achieved all they need to achieve. They've got that knowledge and they can certificate. Because it's really important that they do get the certificate at the end of it. They should get a great learning experience to be able to come to you as an employer and say, Here's what I've done, here's go look and get up, here's my repo of all these projects I've been involved in. You can see my contributions that are there, I can talk quite confidently about what I've done. Um, but I've also got a qualification that means that I've wanted to go to university, I want to go to the university, if I want to take it further, I can do. I'm going to skip Trailblazer at the moment. So what I want is some help. Um, because doing all that is quite hard work and when you start thinking about like, what projects could we do? Um, you get stuck inside your own head, your own limits, your own scope. And down on the software, um, down on the Cornwall College stand in the area where the coffee is, I've got sheets like this, project ideas. What can I do in that academy that would take a week, two weeks, I could even push it to perhaps three weeks, a three week project that a team of four could do, um, which would be authentic, probably even a real project problem, um, that would be interesting for them to solve and cover a range of those topics. So I've got this sheet here, we put down your project idea, your name and contact details, so if I think it's a good idea, I can get back in touch with you. And I've also got all the different topics they have to cover. And if you've got the time, just take a few of those that you think that might um, encompass. So I start to get a map of what this project could deliver. So ideas are one thing. The other thing I want, for those of you who are local, is I want some help. I want somebody to come in um, at the beginning on the Monday, come in again on the Friday for the customer demo, and be able to help out with the project. And if you can come in for a week and Join us for the week and help mentor those students for the week. We're interested in that as well. Um, 
I need whatever help I can get to make it a real authentic uh, experience that feels like they work and they get a lot of value out and they're really engaged. That's me done. Way over time. Thank you very much for paying attention. Do you have any questions? No? No. Cool. Sit me down the court, watch stand. You might see the world.